Welcome back to New Rockstars, Moon Knight Episode 5 broke all of our hearts, put them on the scales of emotion, and deemed them sad. My heart is still sad, and it's been a couple of days now. Maybe I should see someone about this. Can, can't anyone be happy in the MCU? Why is there so much sadness? Why? Like, why can't uh, Steve and Vision just be happy? Hmm? Why? <laughs> anyway, this is Rogue Theory, the show where we pitch the wildest theories for the nerdy titles that we love. My name is MD, and growing rogue with me today is someone who can drive my boat across the duot anytime. It's Whitney Van Lanningham. What's going on, Whitney? Aw, oh, man. I love driving boats, baby. Let's go. I love driving Women boats. love Steve me and really fish style. fear me. Let's get on a boat ride. I love driving boats, baby. Seriously. <laughs> I, I wish that, we, uh, need to, we need to isolate that sound bite <laughs> and use it for the Rockstar's promotional material. That was I love driving boats. We gotta get yeah, we on get a boat. like a boat sponsorship and I'll yes. just do an ad real quick. Absolutely. I love driving boats, baby. And I love driving boats. I love driving boats. <laughs> and the only man whose heart I would lay next to mine on the scales of Anubis, it's Aww. Tommy Bechtold. What's going on, oh, Tommy? Big Head Gang! Peaches and Cream big Gang! Big Head Gang! So glad to With, talk about I, I all these know. topics for the first I, time. I love a fresh rogue theory. <laughs> I love never to be discussed again. It's That's never, oh man, theory. this is not like the second time we recorded this. It no. exists in a fleeting <laughs> moment, and then poof! It's gone forever. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's true, though. Lost Tommy, the sands Tommy's breaking kayfabe. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, dude. Lost to the sands of the goddamn do <laughs> And a man with a card for anything and everything. It's off-screen producer Brandon. What's going on? Hello, gang. I'm so happy to be back uh, here on Rogue Theory again. Uh, yeah, I'm so excited to talk about this episode. It's crazy. I love it. More hippo lady and everything. That's what I got. Yes. yes, we oh. need more hippos in the MCU we in general. We need more a hippo hippos. superhero. I mean, that's a, like, it's some incredible. Everything else, it's like some incredible CGI. That hippo lady, it yeah. looks yo, great. Yeah, it looks smooth. So yo, a lot of people before these Disney Plus shows started, they were like, "How good is the CG going to be, really, for a Marvel Disney Plus show?" Yeah, yeah. really good, really good, actually. Really good. Uh, so, hats off to them. <laughs> Wait, was it but, was it a tweet or was or did somebody post it on on Slack? I do not remember, but did you guys see that picture where it's like she has hippo feet but human hands? Oh, oh yeah, yes. yes. Dodson pointed yeah. that out. Yeah. Which yeah. the hippo feet it's... are so interesting. They are so yes. interesting, but I do love that they gave her the cat's treatment of just a little yes. bit. Yeah, yeah. Just a just little a, bit. Anthropomorphic just enough a to make bit. it bizarre. Hey, yeah. you need uh, you it. need five fingers to, to operate a boat, I feel. You do. Uh, like, like yeah, because like, hippos can't just drive really boats work. if they have, like, little clompers, you know? No. They gotta, they gotta have fingies. And that reminds me, today's episode is brought to you by Little Clompers. <laughs> little Clompers. Oh I'm my god. Uh, driving boats. <laughs> <laughs> I really, but anyways. We should just do this whole episode with Tommy impersonating me. <laughs> <laughs> I love driving that. boats. Uh, first of all, it's I a tribute. It is right a tribute. It's a tribute. That, <laughs> that was good. <laughs> oh, that was the best. All right. So, we're definitely in the end game now for Moon Knight. With only one episode left in the series, it's time for us to make our roguish theories on how this show is going to wrap things up. So that leads us to our first topic of today. How will the series end? Because with Mark slash Steven stuck in an afterlife, not the afterlife, and Harrow presumably achieving his goal in the land of the living, and all those people dying, presumably, which is not fun, how do we think the series is going to come to a conclusion in the final episode? Will there be any major ripples across the MCU? And when might we see Moon Knight again after the show? I think that the end of this show, I'm going to go very rogue on this now. It's going to be it. big. Okay. I think all of these Egyptian gods are going to get killed by Amit. I think Ooh. Amit is going to be released and she's going to turn Ooh. on all these gods and somehow kill the gods. Uh, and because she's going to be pissed that she was locked away in the first place by this kangaroo court of gods of the Indian. Uh, <laughs> so she's going to be released. By Arthur Harrow. Maybe he's already done it. That's why those souls are dropping down. But I think she'll turn mm. on Harrow. She'll eat Harrow. She's going to eat all the other mm. gods. And I think it's going to be a complete wipe out of the Egyptian gods. Except Damn. for Kanchu. Because we need Moon Knight to keep existing. <laughs> we need Kanchu. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Because isn't that a weird thing that like Arthur Harrow was saying in like the earlier episodes? That like Kanchu was obsessed with releasing Amit. Uh, right. And it wasn't him. Like he was. He had kind of. 
uh, Kanchu had set Hera on this path, and he was like, "Yeah, let's get let's get Amit out." And like that, Kanchu secretly does want Amit released in a weird way, mm-hmm. and maybe because he knows that like he'll eat all the other gods, and Kanchu hates the other gods. Oh. So yeah, that's my like rogue theory. Is that yeah, like we're yeah. gonna have enemy zero is my Egyptian friend. gods? That is rogue as hell. Yes, yes. <laughs> I like that. That would be nuts because like I definitely feel like at the end of the series we're gonna get a, a situation where Hero bites off a little bit more than he can chew, and like mm-hmm. the the forces that he's dealing with are not really in his best interest. Like he's gonna get cons- sort of like how we saw with Case Ilias in Doctor Strange One. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. you want to be one with the one? It's not gonna be what you like. Oops, mm-hmm. you're, you're you're dead. Um, you're dead. So, yeah. Whoops, you're dead. <laughs> well, kind of like Red Oops, Skull too, right? Like he wanted the Tesseract so exactly. bad. And then when he touched it, it's like, oh, well, I didn't want this. No. Uh, no more legs for you. You're floating <laughs> forever. <laughs> no more legs or friends. Um, sorry, Red Skull. Uh, yeah, but no, that I can is totally... really sad. I like my legs and my friends. <laughs> I like exactly. both of those things to have I mean, like, suddenly ripped away in a moment's notice over my own <laughs> greed. <laughs> over be... my own greed. Maybe Ugh, like upsetting. maybe he just really wanted someone to like sacrifice themselves for, to to make the soul stone so that he could be free so he could have a penis again. Because yeah. we don't know if he has a penis. <laughs> well, well, yeah, well. We don't know if he has a penis. <laughs> You yeah. don't know that he doesn't. We should just assume it's still there. Come on, that's not no, fair. I, I don't know. That's I'm not, not fair to my boy Red Skull. Dick the benefit of the doubt. Why would I? Give me proof. <laughs> I need evidence. Trust I'm not but giving verify. No Nazi am I right? Dick Ronald Reagan, 1989 or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to sorry, be fair, I mean, I don't want to both sides the argument, but Red Skull did kill a bunch of Nazis as well. So, I mean, you know, this he is doesn't true. deserve a penis. Let me imagine him without one. <laughs> listen, like a Ken doll. He does. Anyway. I mean, listen, I, killing Nazis is great, but come on, he doesn't. He doesn't Siding with them is not so great. Siding with them uh, is not so you great. You don't really get a pass. Uninterested. For that one. Uninterested. You don't get a pass and you don't get a penis. That's how this exactly. Works. No penis or pass. No pass, uh, no penis. Man. That's what I always say. No penis, no peace. <laughs> no penis, no peace. And then K N O W, no penis. No, no penis. Oh, no penis. I solemnly swear I'm up Get to no penis. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking down everybody. Uh, oh my god. All right, I all got right. I got I got a theory. I got a theory. I got a theory. I got a theory. Okay. Go for it. I'm gonna answer your question in two parts. Well, how do I think Moon Knight's gonna end? Okay. Mark Spector, a.k.a. Steven, a.k.a. Jake, uh, is going to get back into the land of the living. He's going to get back and he's going to free Conchu. And then he's going to fight Amit. And something's going to happen. And all those little other Ushakis that we saw in the shelves are going to break. And all the Egyptian gods are going to be free. And that's going to set up our next Moon Knight adventure where he has to go and recapture all of the, uh, I'm going to say heck-raising Egyptian gods that are now Ooh. running amok. Heck-raising. Around the world. <laughs> and who's going to help him? Even a Christian, I like it. And who's going to help him? Well, my friend, that is the next uh, Disney, not next, but an upcoming Disney Plus original series announced at D23 this summer. This is my prediction. The Midnight Suns. The Midnight Ooh, Suns. Oh, baby. Yeah. Track down those Gods, uh. <laughs> you got stuff. I love me some Midnight Suns, Tommy, and I do love me a Ghostbusters type scenario where yeah. we're just hunting down uh, Who are you these gonna gods. It's like, oh, Midnight Suns. Ghost- makes me Midnight feel Suns. Good. Suns. Midnight Suns will be showing <laughs> up, kicking down doors. Show me that dick. Yeah. <laughs> oh <my> God, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what a. <laughs> What a slogan. I don't know if it would work out for very long for the last. That's going to be on what Disney Plus, but the plus will be turned to an X. It'll be on Disney X. Yeah. That's why they, ah, just that's like why they instituted parental controls so they could finally that's roll right. out their show me that you dick policy. I don't need to explain that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> honestly, Disney needs like to g- go up a, a, a rating anyways because it was like this episode. They were like, hang on. How do we take Bambi's mom dying and like amplify oh that That's for a, a modern point. audience? Yeah. Yeah. And then they Show. did. And then they did. They hold my beard, Bambi. And it was yeah. like, this they is won't the most show, like, upsetting Walmart. Disney parent death I have ever seen, ever. It's awful. It's so bad. They won't show like graphic yeah. 
physical violence, but man, will they show graphic emotional violence? Yeah, yeah, like, they will show yeah, they will graphic insane emotional from the violence. Inside. It is that's what Disney likes to do. Like that's how they make their money, just making us cry. You know, just, uh, <laughs> destroying my Toy spirit. Story three. Remember when those toys were almost went into the incinerator? Mm. Yes, Not a dry eye in the dude, theater. they are. They are addicted to making us those sick. They just want us sad. They just want us sad. Up? I mean, I think they crossed the line. Crossing the Rubicon was up, right? They were like, what yes. if we front load this movie with so much yeah. trauma? Yeah. Will people yeah. still stay and watch the whole thing? In and one musical did. number. In one yeah, little one tune. One jaunty number. tune. Uh. <laughs> it's like, we'll just throw Doug in there. It's and totally they play, the kids will they laugh. play that song at the parks while you're walking around. You'll just hear that song and think about your loved one dying in your arms. Wow. And you're just yeah. like, jeez. Like, Remember when you were at Disney World with your wife, Edna? Not anymore. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So, yeah, no, I do, I really do like this scenario of, like, all these gods coming out and, like, you know, possibly maybe even possessing people and being like, all right, I'm just going to make like people out against their will. All over the yeah, world. And yeah, then, I like that. And then, like, you know, all these Midnight Suns have to fight the gods, which is pretty dope. And, like, I would love if, you know, your boy Hercules was involved as well because he's Ooh. a god. And he's just fighting. Ooh, I think that'd be sure cool. Is. You know what I'm saying? Sure just saying. Is, y'all. Just saying. And also, we could cast Liam Hemsworth. Because that's a Hemsworth brother that is not doing anything right now in oh, the MCU. True. Hercules, come on. Anyway, that would, continue. That would be Sorry. interesting because, like, in the comics, like, Hercules and Thor, they're always, like, kind of uh, going against, yeah. you know, the competing all the time. If, if they made Hercules look just like Thor, too, that would be really funny. <laughs> Seriously, comics, it would be hilarious. Too, Hercules is, like, a little slut. Like, that dude. <laughs> he really is. Like, in the comics, like, that dude is, like, he's, like, ten times Iron Man, honestly. Like, yeah. that dude gets around Well, town. I mean, he gets, he gets that from his dad, right? I support right? it. I support Zeus, it, baby. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course. I mean, Zeus gets of around. Course you, around. Of course you get that from your dad. That's, like, the most um. inherited trait of all Greek gods. <laughs> yes. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he definitely uh, should probably get himself tested for sure. Um, oh, he should. If, oh, if no. That works. Oh, Hercules 100% will give you HPV. No question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Use no rabbit doubt. before you tap it. And the H is for Hercules. <laughs> yeah, the H is for Hercules. PV. Yeah, <laughs> Herculean papillomavirus. No, guys, come on, it's Came right there, Hercules. It. Came down with a bad case. Woo, we've Herculean. been demonetized Ooh, this video Herculean. for sure. Hercules! Um, yeah. I mean, not that... <laughs> this is Ooh, for baby, Hercules, Hercules, um, Hercules. Anyway. Hercules, 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 Hercules. <laughs> um, but wait, what you got, Wendy? I think that it might follow. This is, this is like kind of too rogue, but I think that it could follow... The end of the Welcome to New Egypt's comic run because mm. um, at the very end of that, what happens is that we see every possible variant of like Mark Spector Moon Knight. So we see Jake Ooh. Lockley, we see Steven, we see like just other versions of Moon Knight from different parts of the multiverse, whatever. And they basically all come together. And they decide that they are going to kill Khonshu, like, once and for all. Because he's, like, the problem. And, like, all the other gods also hate Khonshu. Like, Mark hates Khonshu for, like, messing his whole life up and all this stuff. And uh, I think it would be a really cool lead-in to the multiverse of madness because... There's going to be so many variants then. Maybe we see that these variants of Mark Spector, Moon Knight, whoever start coming through the cracks, Doctor Strange mm. done gone and <laughs> some shit up for the world. So maybe someone's going to, they're going to sneak on through. I think they're going to get sneaky and they're going to kill mm. Khonshu as a unit of friends. I like that. Yo, I, like that. I would I love like that it. so much. Like it's, Especially if, like, each of those, like, different variants could have been, like, you know, if Steve was the host of One Body and, mm. like, you know, if Jake yeah. was the host, I would love to see different Moon Knights teaming up and, like, just, you know, killing Kanchi. Why not? Screw oh, Kanchi. Yeah, it would be, like, He's super cool, too. I literally I just him. thought of this. But it would be so dope if, like, the variants were the versions of, like, like Stephen Grant from the comics. So he's, like, 
an actor Ooh. and like a oh, wealthy like, actual, like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like love actually that. Yes. like that would be so sick i would like yes. love that like i want the actual comic universe to cross into the mcu so bad because like i feel, i would too. get so emotional to see like actual spider-man teaming up with spider-man actual moon knight teaming yeah. up with moon knight. like all the it would be it so, so i mean cool. actually, I know, real like, life one into it <laughs> but like if it was like canonical in the Marvel comics like, uh, if they yeah, say like, like I'm from universe yeah. 616 people will like yeah just yeah, yeah. Uh, like people, yeah. Oh, yeah. people the fuck would lose out. their minds it would yeah, be like yeah. turning would, on Mr. Brightside out. at a white people wedding <laughs> everyone would <laughs> 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 it's so true. we were talking about that before we shot sorry oh, guys man, that was a joke people. from before <laughs> <laughs> it's for the the cool kid just kidding i'm not cool anyway um anyway here we go uh but no i i really like that theory a lot i think it'll be freaking dope to see all those moon knights just fighting together in, in any type of scenario because we, we have the multiverse coming and so like it would be like if even if like three if three moon knights teamed up together that's nine people that's so cool as a concept. Yeah. I think that's really cool. It would be um, sick. I'm into yeah. it. I just want it to happen. And also, MT, I think that's something that, like, you and I, like, are really the same on is that both of us just, like, have way too much knowledge about the comics. And we're just like, no, it should work like this in real life. No, this is how it's going to, like, happen. And, like, that's exactly. so, like, the angle that both of us come from in our videos, like, all the time where we're just like, no, this is from the hey, comics. Hey, we love the comics, man. The comics listen. are where it's at. They're the where comics it's are where at. all the inspiration and comes from. I know. the Like, basically, if you look at the comics that they say these things are based on, it's just a roadmap for what we're actually yeah. gonna see. So like, of course the MCU Seriously. like throws in their own shit, puts in their new details, changes stuff around, borrows from here, puts that back, whatever. But mm -hmm. like, ultimately, it, it like if you read the comics, you can kinda, you can figure it out. It's pretty You can pretty figure sweet. it out. You can, I'm pretty the, into The roadmap it. is there. And like, especially now that Kevin Feige is now like the head of like the Marvel comics as well. Oh, like you man. can expect like, like what's coming out now to possibly be what's coming in the MCU way further down the line in the next like 10 years. So like pay attention, read the Marvel comics. Cause they're, they're definitely, there's really good stuff, but like they're also the basis for what's to come. So I just can't believe that Kevin Feige didn't invite any of us to that retreat. Like what's going Seriously, on? Seriously, Kevin, let invited. us come to the retreat. Kevin, I want I have some really weird ideas. Frogman. I got some fun. ideas. Do it. <laughs> Frogman for one and, and for seven. I'm just um, anyway. here to support Frogman and MT, man. That's what, <laughs> that's what I'm here for. That's all I want. And then I'll leave you in peace, Kevin. <laughs> but no, oh, these were all freaking dope-ass theories. But I really, really particularly love the theory, this, like, Ghostbuster scenario from Tommy. Because, like, all these gods coming out and then just possessing people or just causing just mischief. And then Blade is like, oh, man, uh, I wouldn't. I should, you shouldn't have touched those Ushabis, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Spectre. <laughs> <laughs> and like now you have to help us clean that's it up that's just so all like, Blade just... does in the MCU is tell people they shouldn't touch things no 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 don't touch, <laughs> don't, touch don't do that you're gonna get don't burned don't touch that, uh, <laughs> don't touch that. sir this is his a glasses museum. just lead him to people that are about to touch things like mm, <laughs> alright thank you glasses <laughs> but no I really like this theory so I'm gonna give Tommy 20,000 rogue points for that Woo! one because Yay! that is just, I love me a, a Luigi's Mansion, a Ghostbusters. It's just fun. Fun times all around. But all right. those, these other theories of like Amit going around, going crazy and just killing all the gods. I want to see that. That'd be freaking dope. Because like Gore would be like, hey, that's a god I like. That's my job. Oh, yeah. I totally, I was going to say that, but I didn't want to interrupt Brandon when he was talking. But I was just like, hmm, do you think that that would make it so that Gore, like in Love and Thunder, comes back and he's like, hey. I actually, I'm not gonna kill you because you helped me take out. He's like, like I'm killing so you last. Many. You're my kind like, of. I'm killing my kind you of guy. last. Like you helped me so much, sir. <laughs> sir, madam, I'm... whatever. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sir, madam, can you? Would you like to get married, Amit? Would you like to get um, married? But... <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, just like, hey, like we're doing the same kind of thing, and it's been hard for me to find a good woman, so. <laughs> But I also, of course, do love this theory of these multiverse marks as well coming in and just running, just just beating Conchu up. And uh, just uh, even though I do love Conchu because he's a sassy man, but he's a jerk. So and he did take advantage of Mark. So he does need a beating. So I do like that scenario where they just say, F you. And um, 
and just beat this man in the second. The multiverse of Markness. <laughs> yes, multiverse of Markness. Let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> so I'm going to give both of you eighteen thousand. Ah, oh. slight lead for the back that. man. <laughs> yes. So Tommy, Tommy is in the lead. So. But it's still anyone's game. But up next, we are going to talk about the possible powers of one Dr. Tarot. But first, starting this coming Monday, New Rockstars will be launching a brand new daily show that will be streaming live every weekday afternoon right here on the YouTube.com. Have you heard of it? It's pretty popular. This show is called The Break Room and will feature lots of familiar faces from this channel. And we'll be talking about nerd news, sharing theories, lots of theories, breaking down videos, and interacting with all of you, which is the best part of doing a live show. So be sure to check out The Break Room starting Monday, May 2nd, right here on the New Rockstars YouTube channel. And also, New Rockstars is now on Tumblr, which is also another popular site, which you've heard of. Not, not, it's not a startup. So if you're a current Tumblr user, a former user who probably needs to reset their password, or new to the platform altogether, come check out what we are doing on our official New Rockstars Tumblr page. And what makes it even better is that our own Jessica Clemens is there right now, possibly posting all of her crazy theories, which are amazing. So be sure to check it out right now and just, you know, just join our Tumblr. It's really good. And we also want to thank Upstart because it can be hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel when you have a high interest debt. And sometimes it can be even harder to ask for help. And that's where Upstart comes in. Upstart powered personal loans can help you pay down high interest debt all online with simple to understand payment terms. And Upstart has helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom. So whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, Upstart can help you get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. So Upstart knows that you are more than just your credit score. Upstart's model considers other factors like your income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to find you a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rate in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000 without impacting your credit score. And you can even receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. So do not wait to check out your rate today at upstart.com slash rogue theory. That is upstart.com slash rogue theory to check your rates today. And don't forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you. And loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash rogue rogue theory all right gang because the moon knight series has played around with what's really happening and what's merely an illusion in someone's mind clearly because uh what's going on i don't know <laughs> and it's not the <laughs> and it's the not knowing what's real that leaves the audience wondering what to trust so that leads us to our second topic for today does harrow have any real agency in this psychiatric ward so like is this dr harrow we see interacting with mark and steven in the psychiatric ward purely a manifestation of Mark and Steven, or does the hero in the real world have some insight into what is happening in the land of the dead? What do you guys think? Oh, I've got one for this, my friend. Ooh, <laughs> take it away, Tommy. I've come equipped with a few theories in my... Flex that big head. Today. <laughs> that sounds weird. I'm sorry. Yes, this big head <laughs> has lots of theories in it. Some that mm. can't be shared on the internet. No, here's my mm. theory. <laughs> I believe Harrow has his agency in the mind and and afterlife and afterlife of Mark Spector uh, or Steven because my theory is that if you have been an avatar of Khonshu and if we believe that that Arthur was once Khonshu's avatar, I consider it, I liken it to kind of how in Stranger Things, like if you've been to the Upside Down, the Upside Down then becomes a part of you. We've got Will mm. puking up little slugs having flashbacks in the arcade, seeing the upside down in the in the regular world. I think once you you are everyone has a bond, a conchu connection if you will, mm. once you become an avatar. So, my theory is Arthur is able to exist in that world because he was also an avatar of conchu. So he therefore has a, a psychic link with Mark. Mm. And I rest mm. my case. That's very cool. I, I like that. really dig this idea a lot because, like, it's very much Avatar The Last Airbender where it's, like, there's this connection between everybody that has had a connection to Kanchu. And, like, it's, it just, it does make sense. It does make sense considering that Tuara had said that this realm was untethered consciousness. So, mm -hmm. like, this is a realm where, like, all, potentially all, all the consciousnesses that were connected to Kanchu could be, you know, able to meet up and talk. So, like... I love this theory a lot. It just makes yeah. a lot of sense. That's where hot um, singles meet up and talk in Mark Spector's. <laughs> uh, yeah. The Conchu connection. The Conchu connection. Conchu meet. Make a connection com. tonight. Conchu people meet. Are you lonely? Make a connection. 
Do you want to talk to <laughs> hot avatars in your area? Mm. Hot. You want to get hot ushaptis in your yeah. area? Mm. Hot ushaptis. We're waiting for your call. Hot I'm ushaptis. all alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all alone. And all those Ushaptis, all milks. Because they're somewhere. all, uh, <laughs> they all got a lot of kids. Um, anyway. Show me your penis. <laughs> Take, uh, <laughs> what I, else you guys got? I think that Harrow has to have, it, it can't just be a, a manifestation of like Mark's or Steven's like idea of Harrow. I think it's got, he's got to have some control there because he does seem like he's guiding it in a certain way. Or like trying mm. to convince Mark that he's crazy and none of it is real. Like to keep Mark and Steven locked away, I guess, or stuck in the underworld. Because I think that Harrow, I still think that Harrow is Anubis uh, in some Ooh, weird way. Yeah. And that, like, oh, that would yeah. give him a lot of power in like the underworld. Yeah. And like, it's just the idea that he seems like too much to be just a normal person who was once an avatar. Like, <laughs> Something so shady going on. Him and like Osiris having their little weird dealings. I think like he's mm. somehow like the only Egyptian god that can physically be on Earth. Maybe because of his connections with mm. the underworld or whatever. He made a deal with the devil. Mephisto, I don't know. Mm. But like uh, mm. he's somehow able to be there. And because of his like, you know, his underworld powers, he is like able to interact with Mark slash Steven, who's like stuck in the underworld. Because I, I that, that one scene where they came back and you know, right at the beginning of the episode and Mark's all like beat up. And that was like, Mm -hmm. we never see him beat up like that again. And we hadn't seen him like that before. He's got like the broken nose and stuff. They inject him with piss into his neck. Like that was some weirdness (laughs) that I think means something. Good old urine injection to calm you down. It was such a weird, it was a weird fluid. Works like a charm. (laughs) Works like a charm every time. Just like NyQuil, really. I mean, there's some some wacky conspiracy (laughs) theorists out there injecting themselves with piss right now to prevent COVID, it doesn't work. Yeah. Don't do it. Uh, but, don't do it. You know. Don't do I say go for it at this point. Piss in, <laughs> go in for your it. Neck. It's bad. You know what? If you're at a point where you want to inject piss in yourself, who am I to say no? Who don't let me stop. Who am I to spoil the party? Don't let yeah. anyone hey, man. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. You're you're correct. My boy Charles care. Darwin would support everything that you're doing. <laughs> yeah. If that's Absolutely. where you're at, go for it. That's all I gotta <laughs> say. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Um, but no, like this Harrow as Anubis is freaking weird and cool. I there's really gotta like be, this idea. Where, there's more than meets the eye to Harrow, and it, it, there's got to be something. Yeah. <laughs> I would love if like Arthur Harrow like did an animorph, just like I'm actually Anubis <laughs> 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 to a dog. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, and then we just watch like literally the animorphs like sequence yeah, yeah. just yeah. happen. Yeah. Yeah, seriously, our like eyes. it has to be '90s like yeah, yeah. CG, like fully, terrible fully, for no reason. Yes. Yeah, that would be yeah. hilarious. But no, I, I love this idea of like that Harry was actually a god who was like, all right, I want to release like my ex-girlfriend or something. And he's like, yeah, all right, yeah. I like I love Amit. So like we I just want her to be together and we just can kill she'll kill people and then more people for me in the underworld and stuff. So like, mm-hmm. yeah, perfect match to made in heaven. I like it. It's a cool idea. I really like that. That is very cool because it's yeah. like, yeah, of course he would want more souls yeah. in the mm-hmm. underworld. He's lonely. Yeah, why wouldn't he? Taking holes Hot single and souls, souls in your area tonight. Hot single <laughs> souls in your area. Um, but no, what you got, Wendy? Okay, so my theory is intense, but okay, mm. hear me out. So I Go think that Harrow does have complete agency within the mind of Moon Knight um, because he still has access to the body, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, he has access to the body on the outside, and I think that that means that he's probably able to do some kind of voodoo situation (laughs) with it. Uh, (laughs) Some voodoo. You know, he's just sticking pins in the the little voodoo doll (laughs) that is Moon Knight. And um, so I think that that's how he's able to do it, and I think that um that place really is like the purgatory where they are trapped between like life and death and then both uh Mark and Stephen Mark gets trapped in the field of reeds he it's great but he does not want to be there at all he wants to go back <laughs> go back and his ex-wife obviously it's a better <laughs> choice than being dead and then Stephen is like frozen in sand glass situation 
down in the uh, the sands of the underworld and the dead. He does. That guy do, does use <laughs> Vaseline hard. Vaseline Burt's Bees lotion. Get on it, dude. Moisturize. Um, and so I think that that leaves the possibility that uh, Mark's third identity, Jake Lockley, is still in the purgatory area because I think that he was the person in the second sarcophagus because Stephen right. woke up in his own sarcophagus and then we saw that sarcophagus like shaking and rattling around and right. at the end of episode four, it seems that in that world, each person gets their own body in the afterlife. And so mm. Mark has his own body. Stephen has his own body. So logically, we could assume that Jake Lockley will have his yeah. own body in that world. Mm -hmm. And so I think that what happened was when Mark escaped, found Stephen, and then the two of them went to Hippo Town, um, I think that <laughs> Jake Lockley busted out of his coffin, tipped it mm. over because it was it was standing upright, right? So like, mm. and coffins are really heavy, by the way. I looked this up because <laughs> I was like, how heavy is it to push a lid off a coffin? Dude, coffin lids can be anywhere from 300 pounds to three tons. Not a joke. They can be anywhere on that scale of heaviness. So like, yeah, it makes sense that little Steven couldn't like push it couldn't up push off it of off. him because yeah because that's just like doing the world's most extreme weightlifting situation um so it would have been easier for upright coffin to just tip itself over yeah. fall out like that mm. jake could have popped out and then when uh harrow's guards were roaming the hospital halls looking for mark they found jake instead and because oh. Jake is the most violent of the three personas, Jake probably fought back against mm. the guards, which is why he got beat up. And then that would be Jake Lockley in that scene where his face is all messed up. Because, yeah, like oh like Brandon God. said, we never see his face messed up again. You yeah. know, like that's the Ooh. only time. So I think that that is the Jake's body and Jake's persona in that scene. And that Harrow mm. still has access to Jake Lockley's soul because he's still in that purgatory area. Mark is in the good place. Steven's in the bad place. And I think oh that God. Jake is going to be the key to pulling them out of the afterlife because he's basically like their man on the outside. Uh, I like it. That makes so much sense because like he, there was still that Jake personality in that coffin. Whoever's in that coffin can come yeah, out yeah. at any time and to be like, all right. Um, there's still, we still got a shot in the game. Here comes player Wait. three. Yeah, player three has entered the chat. Yeah. Did I miss, did I and miss like spaghetti those, night? <laughs> and then like all those, all those times that we were seeing, um, what we thought was Mark could actually have been Jake. Like, I love hey, that Jake. idea where like, we, we sort of like, like jumped forward in time a bit to, for, to like after, uh, yeah. like Steve, it was already in the sand and, and Mark was already in, in Reed heaven. Like it would, just, it just makes sense for for that to happen. And I, I really want Jake to be the one that saves the day. It'd be really cool. It'd be dope. I feel bad for poor Jakey. Fight at the end. He gets dope. left out. Like she was measuring yeah. their two hearts, and it's like, hey, what about this mm -hmm. big guy? Where's what his heart? Jakey's heart. Yeah, well, what let's about balance Jakey out here. What Jake. about Jakey? Like, I have a. He killed a few people. <laughs> Who cares? Come on, let him in. It's totally fine. But like, I have a weird theory of my own when it comes to um to Jake and Steven. Um, because like, if you notice, this is like a weird, my, part of like my weird Marvel trigger theory, color theory. So please bear with me. Um, so like, if you yeah. notice like the, the color of Steven's coffin was like gold when he came out and the color mm -hmm. of this crazy coffin is red, like chaos energy. So like, I think yeah. that Steven represents like the good soul part. And like this Jake is like more chaotic. He's like, all right, I'm like, this is like pure, like chaos. So this is the chaos in me that like, um, the hero was talking about, like, this is like. I'm ready to fight, like, I'm ready to, like, throw hands. So, like, this is, like, yeah. different, like, so, like, the, the, I don't know, the, the wholesome and the chaos sort of balance themselves out, leaving um, Mark to be, like, all right, as long as I understand myself, then we, everyone <laughs> thinks balance. Yeah. Um, so, like, it's, like, I don't know. That's just my weird theory there. But I anyway, like I don't know why I just went into that. Um, <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> no, it's great. But, no, I loved all three of these. I, I say it all the time, but, like, I love all three of these theories. Um, again, like this Jake being the one that saved the day, I think that's highly likely. And I think that's something that could be 
very like real really cool to see in episode six um as we just get to know jake a little bit before season two potentially um so yeah I, i'm gonna give whitney thirty thousand points for that wow, one because that was just baby. wildly crazy and amazing um and but i really of course Love the Kanshu connection because someday we'll find it. The Kanshu <laughs> connection, um, Frogman. Let's get it. Um, but yeah, so I think that you know I, I should give Tommy twenty eight thousand points oh, that gosh. One, because good God, um, that's pretty cool. I like. I think that I, I want to see every single Avatar at one point, and like mm. maybe even giving them advice, and like just be like, all right, this is how you really Moon Knight. Uh, did you know that you had like um, really cool battle rings if you if you pulled it out of your butt? I don't know. I don't know why I say butt. Um, you never try the butt. There's all neat stuff in the butt if you pull out. Yeah, wow. Marvel just needs to, <laughs> Marvel needs to just just give us more butt stuff. I need more Ant Man and I'm Thanos' waiting. ass. I need battle rings coming out of a yeah. butthole. Get with Once it. You full crack he like goes into his butts. armpit. There's like a whole ass sword. It's like the Moon Knight yeah. sword in your armpit. <laughs> Do it. Get but it. I also do want to see an anamorph type scenario with a uh, with Arrow with his cane to be like, oh, check this, check out what my cane can do. Oh, I'm a, I'm a dog now. Um, so like, it'd be really cool to see like a, a really cool like showdown between like a dog Anubis and mm. and uh, Moon Knight. It'd be dope. Um, so I'm gonna give you twenty seven thousand wow. points. Oh, jeez. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. The sliding scales. I don't know what the points Justice. mean. The, the points don't mean scale, anything. Man. These are all great theories. Uh, but no, we are now going to go to our rogue question because now it's this, that time of the show. I don't know if you guys knew how the show works, but that's just how it works. Now, filming has recently begun on the latest Fast and the Furious sequel. Fast X is an indie film. It's an indie franchise. <laughs> I hope it's going to do well. Uh, it's going to take off really soon. But however, it has been announced this week that director Justin Lin would no longer be directing the film and is amicably stepping away over creative differences. So this means that the film needs a new director. So I need you guys to give me the, your roguish choice for a new director and describe what new signature flair that they could bring to the project. Well, here's here's where we're going to go. We're going to go way off of where they've been heading with this, this go franchise. Go off. Go rogue, brother. We're going to bring in uh, Wes Anderson with his signature style. Yeah. Same cast. Everyone's still there. Yes. Uh, but this this is going to be like a prequel, of, of extreme prequel, set in the 1950s uh, during the Monte Carlo Grand Prix. Mm. Uh, all of our characters are coming back. Vin Diesel's there. Uh, you know, uh, Ludacris is there. Helen Mirren. Everyone's there. Helen Mirren and Ludacris, there. At, the Helen Mirren and Ludacris yeah. at the Monte Carlo Grand Prix. Yeah, yeah. They've got curious. very twee outfits, right? It, yeah. You know, Alec Baldwin's <laughs> narrating the whole thing. And every car chase scene is like stop motion with like little toy cars. Uh, and the, the title this. of the film is going to be The Fascinating Tale of the Speedy and Aggrieved. Uh, and oh, that's <laughs> the fascinating tale of It'll the be Wes speedy. Anderson's the take on the Fast and the Furious. Oh that's my god! Pitch. You know what? I I need to see this immediately. I think it's it'd be gonna hilarious. I think shake the I think core for some, of the franchise. For, like, but for no reason, we should just have those like really like sexy girls that like hold up the like the the go <laughs> side for no reason. Like just out yes. of God, like yeah. completely out of the era. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah, one like, ac- <laughs> anachronistic thing there. And it'll be the, the race. It's course. like, all right, this is just Fast and Furious signature. This is what we do in the series. This is what we <laughs> Sorry. <do> this. Sorry. <laughs> but no, that'd be hilarious. That'd be I would love to see that. Well, what do you guys got? I also want to take it in a radically different direction. I Go think... radical. Go radical. I would man. love radical to see thing. Lars uh Lars von Trier take over this franchise <laughs> and and add full uh realistic sex scenes <laughs> to the Fast Oh my Fury. god. <laughs> Uh, Yo, Fast and Furious the Vin Diesel really do be loving them cars, man. Yeah, well, really I mean, I, I guess I hadn't thought that the people would be having sex with the cars. I, I just thought, oh, they have know, to, they well, have to. Yeah, and bro, yeah, like, you know, and like, it's just natural because Diesel always goes inside of the vehicle. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Time, time, time to fill you up with diesel fuel. That'll be yeah. Yeah. Time to get filled up with yeah, extra like, NOS. There, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Toretto should be like married. He has like a wife. He has kids, but that car's out the driveway. Yeah, that car Ooh. just. Yeah, that's like a new he, black he looks outside and the car just it. flashes the headlights at him, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." I gotta be strong. Wow, um, honey, where are you it's going? A different type of striking vipers. We're, we're gonna eat dinner. Uh, he's like, "I gotta go for a drive, babe." Gotta, yeah. Don't ask I questions. Go for a, Sometimes a man just needs to be stressed out. The wheel. <laughs> uh, Don't wait up for me. 
<laughs> yeah, and then that movie is called Car uh, <laughs> Car Car yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yo. Let's just rename the franchise. We, I love Perfect. it. We need a Car um, in but the this, S is a in, Z in, in, in cinemas. So it's yeah. okay. Oh, very <laughs> extreme. Is a Z. Very extreme. Yeah. Um, and Car the Z is like, like a, a weird drive. little like uh, what do you call it? Like a tire skid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got yes. It. <laughs> Yes. You got it. You got it. You got it. <laughs> got it. You're there. Into it. I love it. Well, what you got, Whitney? Okay, I'm going to I'm going to give a serious answer because Ooh. I have thought about this a lot. I have thought about okay. who should direct the Fast and the Furious every second of the last few <laughs> days. Um, so <laughs> I would like to pitch. Freddie Wong as director of Freddie Fast Wong, X. the man yes. himself. I want to see Fast and the Furious, Rocket Jump, Dungeons and Daddies style. That's yes, what I'm here for. Yes, I would. Yes. I really genuinely think that he could kill it. I just, I love his creative ideas. Uh, I listen to Talking Dads, which is the Dungeons and Daddies after show that the whole crew does together. And Freddie really just like understands film in a way that I'm like, I'm so like, good. damn, he could genuinely, genuinely make the Fast and the Furious, mm. amazing. I just think he could. <laughs> I think it would be a great version of that film so series. Good. So I'm going to vote Freddie Wong. <laughs> Bro, if you, I don't know if you've ever seen like that Freddie Wong skit with uh, Key and Peele, but like it's one of the mm. coolest, funniest yes. things ever. Yes, And like no, I, I was so a huge funny. fan of a uh, video game high school way back in the day. Uh, when <laughs> yes. he way back that. in the day. And like you know, Freddie Wong is, su is such a interesting and talented dude. Like so good. So like yeah, I love so that talented. idea so much because he would kill it. He would kill it. Yeah, he would kill he it. He would. So bad. Like, so good, actually. Bad in a good way. Like yeah. they did back in the day. <laughs> I'm bad. I'm bad. Copyright strike. I'm sorry. All right, here we go. But yeah, no, I love that idea so much and all of these ideas. Mm. But, you know, I do love my boy Freddie Wong a whole lot. A whole lot. I do love him a lot. So I'm going to have to give Whitney 100,000 points oh for Freddie Wong. Oh, my gosh. 100,000 points. Freddy. Wow. Let's go. We got some real Freddie <laughs> Wong stands crashing. in the I, I'm sorry. I'm a crashing. huge Freddie Wong lover. And I think you'd, I'm a you'd big be great. fan. He, what can I say? He would really make like the whole franchise, especially if they're going into space, apparently. I haven't seen Fast Nine. Yeah. But if they're going into space, Freddie Wong can really bring it um, right. with the wacky oh, ideas. So, like, absolutely. Get Freddie Wong. Call him up. Seriously. Give why not? Call. Um, so why not? Give call, him call him up. Let him do it. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> but um, I think that I've never awarded points that high. So, I'm going to say that Whitney wow. is our winner. <laughs> Good job, Lynn. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. Um, she is the amazing Scarlet Witch. And uh, she just, she used her Scarlet Witch magic to, to make her the winner. Because I've never I won altered reality and now I won. <laughs> 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 I probably won in the millions. Who knows? The points don't matter. These are all amazing theories. You guys are all super smart people. So you guys all should be, feel proud of yourselves. But this, that, but that is it for this episode of Rogue Theory. Thank you to our amazing guests, Whitney Van Lenningham, Tommy Bechtold, and Brandon Barrick. Support all of them on you know Twitter with the, and everything that they do because they're amazing people, like super amazing. And um, you can support our channel by checking out all of our amazing merch over at NewRockStarsMerch.com and check out our official Tumblr page run by the amazing Jessica Clemens. You know her, you love her. So head on over to our Tumblr so you can interact with Jess because she loves you. And tune in Monday for our new daily live show, The Break Room, right here yes. on our YouTube channel because we have the funniest people working for us. You have to hang out with us because we're going to talk about some gonna wild be shit. Great. It's going to get wild. So tune in. And also, you can share your Rogue Theories over on our Discord. If you are over 18, click the link in the description box below to, just, to join our Discord server today. And of course, you can follow me at Mastertainment on Twitter to see me tweet some really weird shit and insane theories. And of course, you can follow New Rockstars on all our social media platforms. And thank you guys so much for watching. Again, we love you guys times a million bajillion. And we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Adios. Bye.